all right, well, what about if, let's say I have actual land use data on, on some, on, on an area, say, in Paraguay, and I'd be interested in computing the carbon implications. So obviously I need to have values to do that, but where can I actually get the numbers or the values that I need so that I'll be able to input them into the software? Yeah, that's the tough part because these, I think you, in some hours you can use this program somehow and a maximum few days and, and you will master it quite well. But to collect the data, to, to get these numbers, it might require months or years of, of work. Well, it depends, of course, how realistic you want to be. You can get some values from somewhere, even neighboring country or, or so for these land uses. Uh, but if you want to have local data from the actual landscape, then then you should use remote sensing and, and ground truthing and, and actual measurements to, to get that data. So, so for example, uh, for this landscape in Paraguay, uh, depending now how your land use data is, so if you have, if you if you do future simulations and you have uh, let's say five land uses, you have the cropland, then you have have the forest, which might be at this point it might be secondary forest, but it might be approaching like a uh, human used. Uh, forest with more carbon than this patch has but anyway and then you have other other land uses here so one way would be to go and and measure but if if you don't have resources to do that uh, what we have done in some studies i can show you the excel file because we have collected we have interviewed people for example these cases in in uh, northern Peru so we got some carbon density values for coffee plantations for instance we had three values they differ quite uh, widely from 28 to 29 to 72 and then we had we didn't take the arithmetic arithmetic mean of these three values but but we put some weight on these values based on how close and how trustworthy the sources, the references were for our landscape. And we did this for all the land uses. So for example, in this case with 10 land uses, we had uh, just over 100 rows of data. And this is how we got the carbon density values for both biomass and, and, and for soil. These are for soil then. And that's how we, we, we got these numbers for biomass and soil. All right, that's very interesting.